My name is Marilyn Harper, and I'm delighted to be playing this organ for you today. My first piece is by Dr. Morris Green, a contemporary of Handel. Handel got rather fed up when Morris Green got the job he wanted as organist of St. Paul's Cathedral and the Chapel Royal. Morris Green's music was influenced by the Italian composer Galuppi. So in this voluntary, which is slow, followed by fast, you hear a solemn but very beautiful melodic line. And in the following section, you hear a virtuosic, almost violinistic uh, keyboard line, and the whole thing is meant to be a fugue.
Rebecca T. Grubevelder is a Canadian organist and composer whose works have become very widely played in this country. Her chorale preludes are very evocative and Vaini Emanuel is a very good and short example of this. Freutoich is a very well-known Lutheran chorale, always sung at major festivals such as Easter, Ascension and Christmas time. Jersbach's little prelude on this must be the shortest one he ever wrote, and it would have been for the pedal playing the tune and the manuals playing the bass line and the, and the right hand melodic line. His pupil Johann Christoph Ohli arranged it so that the pedal part became part of the left hand part and that is what we have on one manual here today.
Nicolas Le Beg was a very prominent 17th century organist in Paris, although he was born in Léon. His three books of organ pieces comprise all sorts of different kinds of pieces, and book three is the one with the Noels in. So this is where Une Vierge Pucelle comes from, and it is simply a very jaunty little tune that really should be played on two manuals, but here we've got one, and we make do. Correa de Herajo was a 17th century Spanish organist who worked mainly in Seville, organist at San Salvador as well. He wrote many tientos, for that read Fantasia, and this particular one has got a very lovely feature of a right-hand duet for two parts. On a Spanish organ, you would have one manual, but with the keyboard split down the middle so that you could have solo stops in the right hand and the bass stops in the left hand. On this organ, everything is the same.
Ernest Tomlinson died in 2015, having received the MBE for Services to Music in 2012. Like me, he was a keen Lancastrian and was very, very famous for light orchestral music. One of the things he did was to buy up a lot of light music pieces from the BBC when they were shutting the library down and they ended up in his house in Lancashire. His brother Fred ran the Fred Tomlinson Singers and they won all sorts of competitions and used the music for Monty Python. This piece is a charming little piece which reflects this 1950s style which went out of fashion when pop bands came in with rock and roll in the 1960s. Peters was a very distinguished Belgian organist, director of the Antwerp Conservatorium and organist at Mechelen or Malines Cathedral. He is an organist and a teacher and was widely known throughout the world for master classes and compositions for the organ. The little postlude which ends this concert today is from a little book of little pieces published by OUP. Thank you. 
For a start, it has one manual and a limited number of stops. Most organs have got many more manuals and many more stops. But the chief difference is the way that it's powered. Before the 20th century, organs were powered by hand-pumped bellows. On this organ, you've got to pump the bellows with your own foot as you play. And that's quite a discipline. People had to be employed to open the building, warm it up, turn the heating on, put the lights on, that might have meant candles in the old days, and then you had to find somebody to turn your pages, so most of your practice was done at home. So it was communal until the days of the 20th century when you had electricity to pump everything for you. Most people would have had a keyboard, a clavier at home. And if you're on the continent, definitely a pedal clavier, which will mimic what you have to do when you play the organ. So going to the organ would have been what you did when you learned your repertoire or you were practicing for Sunday services. I got into organ playing because I loved the sound of it. And it was the vicar in my local church who invited me to play when an 89-year-old lady who played a harmonium in a mission church on Sundays was about to retire. So I took her place. But it was the sound of the main organ in the parish church that really got me going. This was in the town of West Horton in Lancashire. I later had organ lessons, decided I wanted to do music, and gravitated to the choir at Bolton Parish Church where I was having lessons. And that set me up for life. The repertoire, choral repertoire and organ repertoire just did it for me. And from there, I proceeded to the Royal Manchester College of Music as did Ernest Tomlinson, one of our composers today. And also uh, I was fortunate enough to get an organ scholarship to Cambridge when I did not expect ever to have such an accolade. As a woman organist, I didn't notice that I was perhaps only one or two of us. What was, what was prevalent at the time was that there were a lot of men in Oxbridge colleges as organ scholars. They were male organ scholars because they came from cathedrals where the tradition was boys and men in the choir and women could also not be priests. That's changed and therefore the opportunities for women have increased greatly. So women can now be organ scholars in places other than Girton College and St Hugh's College Oxford. They can be organ scholars in any cathedral and now we are very lucky to have women directors of music in cathedrals in this country. Women have fared better abroad I have to say but the position is changing now. And two colleagues of mine founded the Society of Women Organists, of which I am a committee member. And the aim is to promote and encourage young women to get going because there are some very excellent players amongst them. One of the principal young women doing extremely well is Anna Lapwood, Director of Music at Pembroke College, Cambridge. She was the youngest to be appointed and her career is stellar. So she's one of our mentors, in a sense. On a bigger organ, you would use more stops on more manuals. You would also have a swell box where the pipes in the swell box are controlled by a Venetian shutter and you use your, usually your right foot to operate that. On a much smaller organ like this, the way to, to express is to choose the stops wisely, choose your repertoire wisely, but you use a system of lengthening and shortened notes in order to provide that expression. You will also just fluctuate with the tempo very subtly in places where you need to do that, authorised by the Italian composer Fresco Baldi. <laughs> 